TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, if you do want to check out any of the previous lives or catch any of the future lives, just go to twitch.com and put this in. Just as you see it, you get me. Um, this one is two. It's there's two right here. Just put the first one, and and then you got access to everything, man. Don't forget to go to uh, Patreon.com. We post stuff where we can't post on YouTube, and we also got merch. W merch, man. The link to all of this is down in the description below. I'm. This is Talk TV. We. This is like the third video we watched off of here. They got a good little lineup on Talk TV. I ain't even gonna lie to you. They be having it. Let's watch. Oh, this is the poorest town in Britain. We live on nothing and we're just surviving. And don't forget, by the way... Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. You get me. <laughs> Let's go. It's a weekday morning on Grimsby's East Marsh Estate where residents Grimsby. are beginning their day in the poorest part of the nation. Date, where re residents are beginning their day in Good. the poorest part of the nation. Of course, that's not to say everyone here is living on the poverty line, but the data is striking. The average annual income for an entire household here sits at just 22,000 pounds a year. That's over 10 grand less than the UK national average and almost a staggering 86,000 pounds below London's affluent Clapham area, which has the highest in the country at just above 108,000 pounds. So I'm trying to move to Clapham, knowing I can't afford it, but I'm going. <laughs> it's in East Marsh where we meet Natalie, who lives in the center of the estate with her partner and four children. She mm. receives around 2,000 pounds a month in benefits, but as she begins her shopping with Christmas on the way, She's struggling to make ends meet. She receives twenty-four thousand dollars a year from from uh, aid. That's higher than the national average in that area, and she's still struggling. She do got four kids, and probably a. I don't want to say it too early, but we'll see how her husband acts or her partner. I get tight. Well, especially this time of year, I get tight on my budget. I make sure all my bills and then my big shop and then whatever's left. I get little bits, obviously, my Christmas presents and my son's birthday presents, birthday stuff at the moment. I'm not one of these with loads and loads of money, like where you can just spend it every day and just go and do big shoppings. I get quite a few benefits at the moment because I'm classed as one of the boys' um, carers because one of them's disabled. So um, I used that to get my Christmas presents and I've done my shopping online, which is a lot cheaper than in shops. And Natalie isn't alone. Up and down the country, the cost of living has hit homes and families hard, with the price of energy rising by up to 60% in the last two years. And those... And is it true, like, if you go... If, if Natalie was to go get a real job, she would lose some of her benefits, right? Because it's on condition that she's can't work or something like that, right? Prizes are felt acutely here. Single mum Cheryl lives in a property that's covered in black mould and infested with mice, but turning up the heating means less money for her and the kids. It is very difficult. I've got, like I said, four kids, and then I'm trying to keep on top of mould, mice, and condensation windows, because I've got that one, and my bathroom window is the same as well, so. When you got mold, uh, you got condensation everywhere, it helps to keep your AC on. Like in Florida, mold is common in a lot of places, man, where the, where the windows aren't properly sealed correctly. 
in in Florida in general though, like in Florida in general, just not if the windows are not sealed correctly, mold will grow in your closets because of the humidity and things of that nature. But out in Florida, they say as long as you keep the AC running, then you good. But who the f- wants to do that though? What kind of energy bill are you going to be having at the end of the year? Especially in the UK, Florida energy is like a little bit different because like when you run AC all day, it doesn't hit the same as if you run AC all day in say like Chicago. Like it's going to be a different number amount. Oh, it, it is difficult. I've got my heating on all day every day because obviously with the condensation, it means the heat's escaping. So my house is colder than what it should be. So I'm paying more on my gas and electric than I should be per week just to keep the house warm, to keep my kids warm. This is Grimsby. It is very tight, yeah. I mean, I, I make sure right. my kids have always got what they need. But, yeah, it's definitely, it's, it can be a struggle. It feels awful, you know. I've got good kids coming up to me. You know, we need to sort the mould out in the room again, Mummy, or we've just seen a mouse run across the floor, Mummy, you know. Mm. It's, it's not pleasant. Stories like this are sadly nothing new for Grimsby and especially the East Marsh. The area is the most deprived across the whole of northeast Lincolnshire and nearly every street is... Think about mold though, you can clean it as much as you want, it's gonna always come back. Once there's mold, you just gotta stay on top of it until they tear out the wall and fix the actual problem. It's in the top 1% of deprivation across the country. It's become associated with higher levels of crime Antisocial behavior and homelessness. Or if you can, f- if you can afford a dehumidifier, takes moisture out the air, and and then get an air purifier, that'll help too. Something with higher levels of crime, antisocial behavior, and homelessness. Something visible all over Grimsby. I, I want somewhere to live. I want somewhere to go. I want to work, but I'm just finding it hard. How long have you been living on the streets for now? And what's that like? I'm in hell. That's just about it, really. Residents here are aware of the problems. And sometimes, help from within the community can come from the unlikeliest of sources. Oh. With the lowest incomes in the country, (coughs) it's perhaps... Lenar has... Perhaps no surprise that the nation's cheapest chippy is right here in... You no, know, it's crazy. I was about to say that probably that chippy behind him, Lenard's chippy. Is that what it was? Matthew. Where did I get Lenard's? Matthew's chippy, probably fire. Anytime you in the hood and you see one of these, especially especially when it's the corner apartment, like it's dead on the corner, it's always good. It's perhaps no surprise that the nation's cheapest chippy is right here in East Marsh. Where a portion of fish and chips with a side of peas will set you back only three pounds. Mm. UK fish and chip prices have soared in recent years, with the classic takeaway now setting customers back nine pounds on average. Mm. But at Matthew's Chippy on East Marsh's fish and chips at a restaurant here, eighteen dollars. Stanley Street owner Stan Matthews explains how he keeps his prices at rock bottom. Because I'm down on the docks, we buy our own fish. Uh, we smoke. We've got our own smokehouse, um, so it all comes in line where we can get that product a bit cheaper. Saying that, they, they have gone up. We, we used to be two pound fifty, but because like gas has gone up, electric's gone up, um, the ro- like every, all the raw materials have gone up, so we have to up it by fifty pence. So, so three pound. They're still getting a good meal for three pounds. And it's fresh. With prices like fresh. this. And with a community in need, he serves plenty of punters every day who queue outside the door even before it opens. Some eat here every night of the week, and the product is well received, including by me. Three pound fish and chips, I mean, that's a steal, isn't it? It's, it's, it's great chips. for us uh, pensioners. Every, every penny counts, doesn't it? Three quid, you can't knock it, can you? I come here um, oh, every, every time for uh, fish and chips. The portion you get is brilliant. Absolutely amazing. It's quality. Good meal. You can't be. People, this is $3 meal. He's doing something for the community. 
People still come in here and disrespect them and give them fake notes? That's crazy, bro. He's brilliant. Absolutely amazing. It's quality. Good meal. You can't be a, buy a burger for three pounds. Thank you. There's not a lot of money in it. We, we earn enough just to pay like the mortgage, um, the gas, electric. That's about it. But we're feeding people. That's that's the way I look at it. People are coming in and they're getting warm. Maybe. He's doing it out the love. That's tough. Yeah, cheap takeaways alone aren't going to solve the issues facing Grimsby. While the cost of living crisis has exacerbated things, the challenges for the town are deep rooted. Are the needs here yeah. greater than anywhere else in the country when it comes to citizen advice? They, they echo them. They. I think that's spice, isn't it? Yeah, gotta be. Yeah. Roll over there, tweaking off the drug. Tony. Man. Gaskin runs Citizens Advice for North East Lincolnshire and says more people are using his service than ever before. In the last three years, we've seen something like a 300% increase in emergency uh, charitable support, such as food bank applications, fuel and energy vouchers, uh, people needing help with homelessness. So around about 300% is, 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 is a massive figure, but it's, and it's really worrying. We've seen an even bigger percentage increase for personal independence payment and, an, and, and around about a 200% increase in council tax arrears and worryingly about another 220% on, on uh, energy debts. What is it that drives places like East Marsh, West Marsh to be so poor compared to other parts of the country? I think we're looking at a number of factors. We're looking at that people have, uh, uh, are in part-time employment, people in long-term uh, unemployment, people with high, high percentages in East and West Marsh with people with long-term disabilities and struggle to get to find work. Where they do find work, then they're limited by the number of hours that they work. Uh, people have got struggling with, with fuel costs because uh, pre-1919 properties that are difficult to heat, difficult to insulate. So there's a raft of problems, but there's also a really engaged um, infrastructure trying to bring people out of poverty in North East Lincolnshire, and particularly in these two wards. And the work that's going on is remarkable, uh, but the, the, the challenges that individuals face is, is huge. So what's the best solution? Well, it depends who you ask. All of these people that always look for a solution, man. Let me hear. And some members of the public have different ideas to the experts about what's causing these issues. I was talking to two young lads the other day and they was on about the cost of living. I said, you should have lived through the 80s then you would have known what the cost of living was. But it's a different generation now, isn't it? They, they, they won't tolerate low wages and bad work. Anybody could walk into a job. And now because of, um, how can I say this, family tax credit, people realise they don't have to work anymore, so they don't, they take advantage of it. A lot of people won't work because they work and the way it's often and, and working. So I know people are saying, well, that's a load of rubbish, but I, I spoke to people and said, well, I'm not working. The time I paid me rent, paid me council tax, there's no paid me gas electric, there's no, no I, extra to get food in. If you look at the, at the figures, there has been no inflationary increase to benefits for 10 years other than the one last year. And in real terms, people on benefits now are about 25% worse off than they were in 2010. With the cost of living increase as it hits, then that just exacerbates that problem and makes it... Looking for an easier way to... Ooh, are you stuck in a cycle that's not getting better for you? It's getting worse and worse about a year go by. It makes it more difficult increase as it hits then that just exacerbates that problem and makes it more severe and makes it more difficult to manage. And in the interim, in the short term, increasing benefits by the rate of inflation is the right thing to do. But with a quarter of people in the yeah, area right. That's not economically happening. inactive as of March 2023, how did this once prosperous town find itself in this situation? Grimsby's fishing heritage... Increased benefits at the same prices, <laughs> at the same speed as inflation. Come on now. Who are you fooling right now? It stretches back over a thousand years, and by the mid 20th century, it had reached its peak when over 500 trawlers a day would leave these shores in search of a catch. Then the Cod Wars happened. It seems that the country's 
a bar owners from the fishing grounds, which have traditionally been ours, yeah. are standing back now and taking a market and laughing at us. Between 1950 and 1976, the Cod Wars were a series of disputes between Britain and Iceland, which changed Grimsby and British fishing forever. Like UK Brixton. vessels had been fishing in Icelandic waters since the 14th century, but after the tiny country gained independence from Denmark, things changed. Iceland expanded the area other countries could fish from its coastline, from four nautical miles to an area eventually 50 times that size. While the industry was already in retreat, these moves, along with a decline in cod population, decimated British fishing, and the EU's common fisheries policy in 1980. Nixon LB resubbed. Appreciate the resub. There it is. I couldn't see it before. E3, which brought Three months, additional too. restrictions Salute. and quotas, became the final nail in the coffin. Thousands of British fishermen lost their jobs as a result but had to wait until the year 2000 before the government paid out any compensation for the pain caused. Why so at long? Grimsby Fishing Heritage Centre, retired trawlermen still get together once a week to share stories about how they risk their lives to put fish on British plates. The young ones of today are struggling because there isn't the work for them anymore. 85 because there isn't the work. Four or many. Why the glasses look like that? Are those the ones that adjust to the sunlight? Gotta be, because that's crazy. More. 85 to 90% of people in Grimsby had something to do with the fishing industry. And it hits everybody hard. And I think that's why we're like that now in Grimsby. We were overfishing. If you saw a farmer. Yeah, man, all of these fisher town, all of these fishermen towns or industry like big plant towns, they're all doing bad. I don't like. Is there a case where one of them are doing good that we just haven't seen? Go around shooting his cattle when they're very young. You say, "What's happened, this bloody lunatic?" And we were catching fish with a rose and the uh, rose, and it's breaking my heart in the spawning season because the shellfish came on the shoals. And I thought, why don't we stop? And the end there was fish, less fish, less fish, less fish. It used to be Great Grimsby when fishing was going. I had two families. I had a family at sea and I had a family at home. Grimsby to me has gone downhill. These days, there's barely any homegrown trawlers left in Grimsby's iconic docks. But that doesn't mean the industry is dead. Produ these iconic docks, but that that's how fish be looking at. Why it look like it's like rotten or something? It looks slimy. That doesn't mean the industry is dead. Produce from Scotland, Iceland, the Faroes, and Norway is sold and processed here instead before being shipped around the UK. And at the crack of dawn, we get a glimpse of what Grimsby's fishing heritage looks like in the 21st century. I kind of want to do this, like what he's doing, like go check it out and be a part of it for a day. But like, I'm just like, you know what I'm saying? I'm too, I'm too city. <laughs> I would do it, but I wouldn't like it. Come on in. Straight in then, gents. Hey then, then, 270, 580, 270 a kilo. 270. Here at the group. Uh, is this like auctions? Grimsby Fish Market, traders say they oh. used to shift about 7,000 boxes a day. Now they're lucky if they hit 7,000 a week. Despite the change in fishing fortunes, the market CEO, Martin Boyes, takes a more philosophical view and is far more upbeat than most when it comes to Grimsby's future. The industry is, is quite complex, and what we've managed to do in Grimsby is to be able to diversify. So as you've seen today with some of these vessels, we're not just a fishing port anymore, we're also an offshore wind farm port. So uh, what's called an operations and maintenance what port. Is that mean? And okay. that diversification has allowed us to continue with the Grimsby fish market, even at that small level, as you rightly point out. But like a lot of things, it's, it's not like it used to be. Yeah, because everything else is subsidized and taking care of all the bills. That fishing market ain't gonna do it no more. But it's still here, we're still busy. People still eat fish, it's a good protein, uh, and there's still a good demand for it. 
What does the future look like? Are you hopeful that things will get better for Grimsby? I think it's a great opportunity and what we've got to do is actually get that message over to the young people in, particularly in a place like Grimsby, that there's a lot of jobs available in fish processing. It's not about going to sea. People just used to think, you know, if, if you didn't do any good at school, oh, you can always go to sea. You know, well, that was all right in the 1960s, but that, that's gone. But it wasn't supposed to be like this. There's no way, I don't, I don't care how much money is on the line. You're not getting me to go on up to sea. I'm never going to do it. I don't think I would ever do it. If you'd be like, man, you got to be on this this ocean for three months, but we'll give you a million dollars. I don't think I'm going to do it. Because <laughs> the chances of me losing my life are like 60%. And that's too much of a chance for me. I'm good. 70% man. of people in Grimsby voted to leave the EU in 2016. And it was hoped that Brexit would help change the future of Britain's fishermen. It's an opportunity here to look at one of the ways in which this country will be able to uh, take back control of a massive industry. Then Our work out. Coastal good. waters go out 200 miles and there's a potential to do really well for, for UK fish. Martin says it hasn't quite worked out that way, yeah, then, but he doesn't regret his vote. Better designs make... A lot of the a lot of people's decision to separate from the EU and the Brixton situation, like I'm not educated enough to speak on it like crazy, but just from me watching a lot of these videos, I see a lot of people are not happy with that decision, low key, but they just too prideful to admit that they was wrong. Hey, hey, hasn't quite worked out that way, but he doesn't regret his vote to leave the EU. Yeah, yes, he it did. was never as simple. Uh, towards the industry, so certainly to me, as it was portrayed to the great British public. And one of the things you find about the fish industry is that when it's when it's the election, is that economically, in good. terms of GDP, it's very, very small. But in terms of emotion, it's very, very high. So I just thought it was a bit of a bandwagon and a bit of a cheap trick, actually. Back in London, we caught up with the Conservative MP for Great Grimsby, Leonici. She's positive the town is far better off outside the EU and that any damage had already been done. Well, let's be clear, 70% of people in Grimsby wanted Brexit. You know, undoubtedly, we're a Brexit town and people wanted to be free of the EU. But people didn't make that decision based on business. They based that on wanting to be a sovereign country. You know, when I talk to people about that, that's undoubtedly, they say, yes, we know that there are going to be pros and cons with being part of the EU or not being part of the EU. So if somebody in the comments, like, explain, like, like the whole, or should I watch a video? Okay. Now this is big I think I did watch a video before, so I kind of got an understanding on it, but, like, I want to know, like, the widespread effect of it all. You know what there I'm saying? There are people who don't come from Grimsby that think that we've got some amazing fishing industry and that Brexit has been terrible for us. Well, let me tell you, the fishing industry died the day that we joined the common market. What do you do to try to stem the losses that we hear about from business leaders in Grimsby? I just be feeling anybody in these positions of power, they just be chatting just to make themselves and the decisions that they made sound better or less impactful. Who said before the vote, before Britain left the European Union, it was so much easier to do business and actually it was easier to generate profits for Grimsby. I've worked hard to make sure that people can see a different kind of MP. I've been out there, I've been working with people on practical projects, helping to, them to, to succeed in areas. You know, East Marsh has been one of the poorest areas in the UK for five decades or more. Um, it, it's not something that's going to be fixed quickly. All I can say is I'm working hard, making sure I can do the best that I can well, it to, takes to really be noisy for Grimsby. And I have been. I've been at the centre of government, making sure Grimsby being uh, represented. Build a school and build a hospital. Once you do that, everything's on the up and up, man. Once you build that hospital... Brand new, I'm talking about. If they can afford, if the city can afford it, build a hospital. Everything around that hospital is going to thrive. Everything going up. Great Grimsby had been a Labour seat in every election since 1945, making up part of the so-called Red Wall that crumbled to the Tories in 2019.
Those we spoke to weren't completely sold on their relatively new MP, but with a general election just around the corner, there wasn't much appetite for Labour either. The uh, local area MP, have you seen much of her? Never see her. Um, I can't remember what her name is. What's her name now? Leah. Oh yeah, Leah Nicker. Never ever see her. Have you ever seen your local area MP? No. And what so she just came on here and just did all that cap and I'm out here with the people. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And my face is like, come on now, ain't nobody seen you? Do you think of your local area MP? Uh, I can't give an opinion of somebody I don't know. Uh, I, I won't be voting because it, to me, it doesn't matter who you vote for, they're, they're all as bad. The unseen, I'm sorry, I, I try not to be political, but I call her the unseen MP. Um, never see her. How long does an MP's run in office? Like, how long does their... When they're voted in, how long is their term? Is it the same as the president, U.S. president, four years? And then it's another vote, or what? Jane Hilden King was once mayor of North East Lincolnshire and now works for the Fisherman's Mission, giving support to retired workers and their families. She was born in the East Marsh, and has a much better understanding than many about how Grimsby found itself in this situation. We had a thriving docks. We had numerous companies from Fish Fingers, Birdseye, Rosses, uh, Findus. We had the Humber Bank with all this employment. Look around today, no Enough. food factories or very few. If they are, they're very small. Uh, we've lost basically all the oil industries and the big industries from the Humber Bank. And I think generally the public... Did y'all see them people? Man, this is off subject. She just mentioned oil, but I know y'all might have seen this. This is world news or something. Somebody was digging in some ice and they found oil? I don't know the whole story or where... Like, I know they was probably actually searching for it, but they found it. Instant billionaires is crazy. Don't let me find no oil. Listen. <laughs> What's up? No jobs in the big industries from the Humber Bank. And I think generally the poverty is because no jobs and we are suffering in this area through lack of employment. So therefore, because of employment, what jobs are around are very low paid. And of course, our people are suffering really badly. And I don't think people grasp it. I don't think the government grasp it. We put the comments of people in the town to Leonici, who told us. It is impossible for me to meet all 88,000 residents who live in the constituency. Of course. I live in Grimsby. I have spent most of my life working in and around Grimsby. I meet constituents in the town every week and work hard to represent them and will continue to do so. It's fair to say that towns like Grimsby sometimes... It's cap. I don't believe you. ...come with an unwanted rep... The people have spoken. ...reputation. Post-industrial decline is a story heard up and down the country. And walking around the town, it's hard not to notice the deprivation on display. But there's more to a place than just its high street. And Grimsby has a proud community. For 18 years, entertainer Andy Carr had a unique insight into his hometown and what makes its people tick. He was the original Mighty Mariner, Grimsby Town Football Club's official mascot. <laughs> Every week, he saw thousands of fans make their way here to cheer on their team and their town. And these passion. Jorge has always. I'm trying to see why is that the mascot though? Like, what's the what's the? Passionate in his love for Grimsby, and doesn't understand why it comes with such a reputation. It annoys me because I wouldn't. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a homie. I, I I love living in the area in Grimsby, Cleethorpes. My family are the same. There's a lot of areas, there's more areas than bad areas for me in, in Grimsby and Cleethorpes. But it's just a shame that once again, Grimsby Cleethorpes is being tarred with the negative brush when actually there's a lot more positive to come out of the area. And, and the people, the people in Grimsby and Cleethorpes, you know, there's a lot of good people. Yeah, we've got some bad, you know, the, the, there's, you know, some undesirables as you get again. Instantly, when he started talking about the bad people, he couldn't even get this statement out. He was, yeah, we got some bad, some, some undesirables, you know, but uh, that means it's more undesirables than he really wanted to lead on. In, in all towns and cities, I just, uh, I just wish that, um, I just wish that the positives for the area outweighed the negatives, which I actually think they do. How do you feel then when you hear about those statistics from the ONS? 
it's one area. We're talking about one area of Grimsby Cleethorpes. I haven't, to be fair, seen the statistics of what the other areas are, but what about all the other areas in Grimsby Cleethorpes? Um, you know, that um, probably nowhere near the bottom. You know, they've obviously singled it out. It, it's good in one sense that it's been singled out because oh, maybe you can go. do something about that area. But I personally would never move away from Grimsby Cleethorpes. I love living it, you know, love living down here. And uh, the fact that I'm a big Grimsby Town fan, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't move away and not come to the games. But as crowds leave this stadium... Sometimes you got to move to grow. And if you satisfied being stagnant, then hope for sure. Stay where you at, or you got a family and you just you like that life. Stay. But if you're trying to go reach the sky, you can't reach it from your hometown. I don't care how great of a hometown you live in. People will only see you as that person who you are in that town. They'll never see you as more. <laughs> Every other weekend and head home. What sort of situation are they returning to? In some ways, it feels like Grimsby has been left behind. Depending on who you ask, it could be in for a bright future. One thing feels certain, though, that the last couple of years have not helped the situation. And if UK living standards don't improve fast, it could be the difference between Grimsby's resurgence or further them. decline. They're not bothered about us down here, and that's been like it for years. But you can see it's just rough, it's rubbish everywhere. There's a lot being done. Uh, and whether or not it's enough, that's debatable. Whether or not it, it's too late, I doubt it. I think that, that, that we've got time to try and turn things, things around. A lot more could be done in this area, because I know I'm not the only house with mould or mice either, so a lot more could be done to, to help. There's always a lot more that can be done, man. It's just, is there money that can be allocated to, the, to helping? Like, where are we taking this money from? And is it worth give, relocating it to where it's being relocated or acts to be relocated? And that's nine, nine, nine out of ten times the problem every time. Like, yeah, we're not going to take this money from over there to put it here. Sorry. Figure it out, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notification bells. I hope it all gets better. But I'm not ignorant. <laughs>